This is going to have spoilers. Uh, it's for people who've already watched it. The plot is perhaps almost too minimal. There's there's very very little. It's basically just they're trying to document and trying to figure out what to do about it and that's pretty much it. There are no subplots, there's no... that's it, you know, for an hour and a half. And and I, I do think it works for that amount of time. It wouldn't have worked if it had been longer. It would have needed more. Um, but, you know, I mean, if, if you watch others of... Um, Diary of the Dead, for example, commented on a bunch of things, and that was also fairly short. Um, and this just doesn't really. Um, there's not. I, a, apart from maybe commenting on relationships and the way men react to things versus the way women react to things, maybe. But apart from that, it basically is, you know, what you see is what you get. There's no, there's nothing more to it, I suppose, which is fine. You know, it doesn't have to, not everything has to be Shakespeare, as the saying goes. I think it was a good decision to make uh, Mika the way that he was. Um, I really thought that was going to be pronounced Mika, but whatever. Mika, you know, I mean... In, in in my theater, um, every so often, when you know when he sat there with the guitar and when he said stuff or did stuff, people would say "loser" and "idiot" and "moron" and stuff. And it is kind of I mean he is going to get on some people's nerves. He is going to irritate some people and provoke some people. And Apart from the fact that without him there really wouldn't be a film because it's his idea, as far as I understood, to do the whole filming and to keep on going with the, um, so, you know, but apart from that I also do think that he, he just, he, he helps make it real because without the, the people it's, it, it needs more to be, to feel real if the people aren't real, um, and and he does come off as very real. It's um, like you know he he maybe doesn't really know what he's dealing with, and he he can't quite take it seriously because he's probably afraid that it is real, that there is you know something, and he keeps seeming to want it to be something that he can just fight, you know, hit with a baseball bat and call the police or something, and that works pretty well, I think, um, and um, I, I think it was a, a good decision to make the character be that way, because, you know, maybe you can relate to him, maybe you can't relate to him, at the very least you can react to him, you can, you look at him and you see a person, um, not just a, a one note or, you know, an, an easily um, you know, he's, he's not a stereotypical character. Um, um, I, 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 th I think it's interesting for a genre, subgenre, style, that began with the Blair Witch Project, which, I mean, part of the, the effect of that one, um, was this mythology that, you know, the, 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 the children, the whole... Rustin Parr thing, and given that, you might expect the the, um, the films to come in the wake of that to be to also take um, an approach that had a good deal of mythology. There's really barely been any in any of them since uh, the Blair Witch Project. As, as far as I've I've watched most of them, I've tried to watch most of them. I think it's an interesting. Um, way to do horror, and it can be very effective, but most of them seem to kind of be almost towards the point, I mean, Cloverfield, to an extent, you can kind of yourself figure out what you think has exactly caused 
the creature. I mean, there there are like hints, and I think maybe who the hell knows if JJ knows for sure anything behind any of all the mythology that he creates. But you know, in in many of them, it's kind of you know, Diary of the Dead. They still don't explain exactly what causes the zombies, um, as Romero really doesn't seem to want, and, and I think that's the right way to go about it. Um, and, you know, quarantine also, well, that had the, you know, the mutated rabies something. Um, but apart from that, then, and, and this especially is really, you know, they, they could have had a mythology, they could have had it be some kind of fictional or, you know, either they could have made something up or they could have gone with something mentioned in the Bible or, I don't know, so, um, you know, something Lovecraftian maybe, I don't know, but they don't. It really, apart from the fact that it's followed her her entire life and you know, that Diane apparently had the same, it might have been the same demon, we don't really know. Apart from that, there's really nothing. And and that was kind of interesting. I mean, when I first saw the ending, I hadn't really thought that was how, I mean, you know, you had the running thing of it wants Katie, but I, I hadn't personally expected it to be for that, you know, f uh, to full on possess her. Um, Literally. Uh, but, you know, that that kind of worked um, as, you know, it, it wasn't completely out of the blue because it did have that, you know, the foreboding of it wants Katie. That's, um, but, you know, it, it um, I, th I think it could have been interesting if there had been some kind of mythology and at the end of it, it, you know, um, it accomplished that uh, the the climax being some kind of it it manages to do what it was always trying to do um, and we realized why it couldn't do it before something I think that could have been uh, a good the, the ending that there is uh, I don't know if there were I've heard of uh, three different endings um, the one I got was um, um, she um, she hurls Ma Mika at the uh, the camera and goes and like at first I thought I, I wasn't entirely sure if she was gonna like you know just munch on him and take a big old bite out of him or what but IMDB says that she was sniffing him okay maybe yeah sure why not and then she lunches at the camera and then you know we get the thing about that she hasn't been seen since. Um, I've also heard about um, the one where she's like in a catatonic state sitting at the um, the on, on the bed with the knife and then the cops come in and she you know um, she, she gets shot because she doesn't drop the knife in time um, and uh, yeah because the door slams behind them and uh, then there's the one where she walks up and got the blood on her shirt and then she slits her own throat. I haven't watched either of those, but I've heard about them. But, you know, it it was an effective ending, I do think. Although, it does... I mean, it, it reminded me of Halloween, the original Halloween, 1978. And, let's be honest, it's more effective there. It, plain and simple, in the first, what, three minutes, a six-year-old kills his older sister, a teenager, and throughout the movie, Loomis keeps telling us, you know, he's pure evil, there's nothing inside of him except pure evil, and, you know, he, he slowly, he, he stalks all these people, and we see him watching, gradually builds... Then he kills three, 